On today's show, a special edition of Minnesota Bound, we're going to take a look back in our 24th year and also look ahead. But stay tuned for a really big announcement. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show and this is a special edition of Minnesota Bound because we are going to take a look back at our history and also look ahead at our future. Now we begin with looking back at Minnesota Bound show number one, I bet you remember. Now here's your host, outdoor columnist for the Minneapolis Star Tribune, Ron Sheriff and his dog Raven. Here we go. How was it out there, Raven? Huh? Pretty good? Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to my place. Come on, Raven. Get in your corner. Time to start the show. Get in your corner, girl. Atta girl. You know, we're going to begin tonight with the topic of hard water. Now, not the kind you put in a glass, but the kind that covers our lakes. Almost overnight, this new outdoor program on CARE 11 became an instant hit. Why? Well, we told stories for one thing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Finn. And I'm Gil. And we're the only two professional anglers named after fish part. In addition, Raven became the star of the show. She was an instant hit too. You loved her. Plus, Raven became a conservation hero. Raven's toy lookalikes were sold at the Minnesota State Fair to raise money for a public wildlife area called the Two Rivers Wildlife Management Area. By the time Raven was done, she helped Pheasants Forever raise more than a quarter million dollars to help purchase this wild land from a farmer willing to sell. Oh yes, for years, Raven also performed her retrieving skills at the State Fair up in the North Woods, where she met her fans at the Minnesota Bound Cabin. Now for the record, this is Raven the Third. All of the Ravens have been females, so Raven's grandmother started it all 24 years ago. Now, let's take a look at some of those stories over the past years. Some were great, some, well, I guess could have been better. Nature appeared regularly on Minnesota Bound. Why? Why, she's always a good story. We learned about birds, the killdeer, we listened to the song of wrens. We were there for the courtship dances of western grebes and migrating sandhill cranes. And the autumn spectacular of snow geese filling the sky. Pretty awesome. And who can forget the goofy grouse we met? Like this, see? One rode an ATV. And all of a sudden he jumped on, jumped up, and, and I just thought, there's nobody who's gonna believe this. But Gilbert the Grouse was especially mystical. Some people have often suggested that it might be my grandfather coming back as a grouse. We gave tribute to the white-tailed deer. I never tire of seeing you, old friend of mine, you, the white-tailed deer. And we honored the fish that made Minnesota famous, the walleye. Over the years, we featured lots of characters. Arnie, the wood duck man. She's looking right at me. Mel Dickey created art in the back corner of a Rochester tackle shop. Uh, they're old hands. They've been doing it a number of years. Gary Roach is Mr. Walleye, but he's a character too. This feels like a nice fish here. Oh yeah, it's a nice walleye. Look at that, Ron. I heard a whole bunch of them here. So is Minnesota's Mr. Bass, Steve oh. Quinn. <laughs> of course, he outfished me. Did you beat me, Professor? Well, oh, this looks awful cool. <laughs> I've got the bedpan blues. Among the characters was That's a guy named thought. Otis Lale. This is the 14th bedpan, which I thought. I just, uh, I just want to enjoy myself and what time I've got left. I 
I also cherish the stories about Mother Earth and caring for our environment. We asked a question one time, where does your garbage go? We also explored the impact of intense farming on Minnesota's water quality. Looking back, we caught a lot of fish. A giant northern pike. A giant bass in Mexico. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. But I, I tried to be honest. Uh, I missed a lot of fish, too. God. Here he comes, here he comes. Watch him, watch him. God. <laughs> He took it all! <laughs> My family also starred in Minnesota Bound. Grandson Jake shared a boat with Grandpa one day. I have one! Really? Yeah. Oh. Uh. Yeah. It's a big one. What? It's a big one. It was long before sunrise when my two daughters, plus Jake and a friend, joined me on Lake Michigan to catch a mighty salmon. When one of my favorite fishing partners made his last cast, I wanted to share his memory too. There we go. Rest in peace, bro Robert. Lastly, dear viewers, we celebrated the dawning of a new day. All of which means there's a new day ahead for Minnesota Bound. <laughs> ah, the memories. You know, I'm convinced it was our stories that kept you watching over all these years. Now, when we come back, we're going to continue our look into the archives and also start looking ahead. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll continue our journey into the Minnesota Bound archives, and we'll visit with two members of the Minnesota Bound team, starting with the man about the woods, Bill Shirk. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC dealers, Alumacraft, Radco Truck Accessories, and by Kinetico. Welcome back. Joining me now, one of the members of our Minnesota Bound team, Bill Shirk. Bill, uh, looking back, how many years has it been for you? 15 years and counting. But do you remember wanting to test me right off the bat, my writing and story gathering skills? <laughs> Made sense to me. Oh my gosh. What happened? You sent me out on a story about shed hunting. You know, the people who go out and find dropped deer antlers. Mm -hmm. Truth be told, nobody knows this, I did not sleep the night before that story because our stories are about people right but in this case we actually needed to see somebody find an antler yeah, to have sure. a little magic for sure you have to find a, an antler well q murphy's law we look for hours and find absolutely nothing hmm. i'm just dead you're going to be fired i'm guessing right before i even get the job <laughs> but then we hear a sound Awesome. All right. <laughs> nice job. Great big war point. Awesome job, dude. Right here. <laughs> How'd you cool. see it? I don't know. I was just walking right on this trail and I saw some tines sticking up. Real cool. That's a great way to do it. Can I pick up one? Yeah, you can pick up <laughs> Now you got to find the other one. And that's what keeps them coming back. One over here, Mark. <laughs> that kid saved my career. Better to be lucky than good. So I hired you, right? You did. Thank goodness. <laughs> you know, but over the years, you've done a jillion stories, and you've been on a lot of other TV shows that we produce. We have 15 of them over the years. But the thing is, my passion still lies with local stories and local people. Minnesota Bound stories, there you right? Go. Right. I think back to a piece we produced on local artist Bob White. Yeah. Years ago, Bob White and I offered a fundraising donation to the sick kids at St. Jude's Children's Hospital. I would guide the winners to some smallmouth bass on the Mississippi River, and Bob would sit in his boat and do an oil painting drifting alongside us. Uh, I remember that story. I mean, that, the guy's trying to paint going down the river in a boat, right? Right. Easier said than done, <laughs> especially on the windiest day of the summer. 
bungees and clamps keep Bob's rigged up easel from falling overboard. <laughs> Everything's changing, the scenery's changing, the, um, the light, uh, the, the, the day. The only thing I can think of that would be more difficult would be painting uh, in an open cockpit of an airplane. <laughs> Cute, Murphy's Law. Oh man. Just when things cannot get tougher. It's like sometimes I'm lucky just to hit the board. <laughs> they do. Man, that's amazing. With the wind blowing and the current and whatnot, I don't know how he's managed to keep a steady hand. <laughs> I'm working on that. I'm working on that. Yeah. A lunch stop proves a welcome rest. Well, except for Bob. How you coming, Bob? It's coming along. It's nice. He skips to stay at the steady easel. This is like a big treat to be able to make a mark and not have the boat be moving. <laughs> yeah, I want you to be stable because I want to be a swim. <laughs> <laughs> Fly Let me use a little brush. Yeah, yeah, I want to use a little bit of brush. I don't want right. to use a big brush. <laughs> but the brush strokes only last so long. And so do dream fishing trips. Which is why she's finished. This single painting may be so profound. So it'll be interesting to see what the finished product looks like. It's all done. It's all done but for the drying and the shipping. Got my signature on it last night. Bob White's canvas now forever reminds us of a river, new friends, and always the children of St. Jude's. You know, kids are kind of where it's at for me and um, just I feel kind of honored just to be part of it. One of my all-time favorite stories. Well, Bill, you've told a lot of great stories over the years, and so that brings up this question, what have, what have you done for me lately? Now, maybe you ought to get back to work. I'm getting out there. <laughs> <laughs> up next, keeping it in the family, the Minnesota Bound family and my family. More memories from Laura Shera. Stay with us. There you go. <laughs> Closed captioning is brought to you by Minnesota Rebat. Welcome back. You know, shortly after Minnesota Bound hit the air, there was another revolution going on in the great outdoors, and that was more women were hunting, fishing, hiking, camping, you name it, which meant for my daughter, Laura Shera, a job opportunity, <laughs> right, Laura? Well, Dad, I don't know if I remember it as a job opportunity, but more like a volunteer opportunity. Volunteer, you mean uh, you work for nothing? <laughs> yes, when I first got started, I pitched you the idea of a segment called Wild in the City. And you said, well, you know what, why don't we hire you on a volunteer basis and see how you do. So I went ahead and got started and showcased things to do right in the outdoors in the metro area. And well, I think, well, you take a look. Let's take a look at the segment. Now that we're into the colder months, it's always harder to find places to keep you connected to nature. Well, we've certainly found something that's going to keep you wild in the city. This is the Bell Museum of Natural History, and we do lots of different things over the course of the year. One of our fall exhibits is our oddities and curiosities of nature, and it's an exhibit of the weird things in our collection that people don't get to see usually. our four-horned goat skull, or um, we, this year we have a special part that's all blood suckers, all things that eat blood. Such as this bat here. Everybody's favorite, of course, a vampire bat. And they just cut small little incisions, and then they lap up the blood. <laughs> kind of creepy. <laughs> you know, Laura, that was a pretty good story. I, I guess I probably started paying you after that. I think it may have taken a while, but yes, eventually you did. <laughs> what are some other memories? Oh my goodness, Dad, you and I have so many memories of sharing the outdoors together, but one that really sticks with me near and dear is my very first turkey hunt with you, because I know how precious the wild turkey is to you, so to pass it on to me was one special day, and I was quite nervous, to say the least. Well, to be my daughter, you have to be a turkey hunter. <laughs> it's that simple. The wind was howling, it was cold and dark, and I was thinking, this is crazy. <laughs> and then um, 
it kind of got calm and the sun started to rise and there's a slight bit of light. You know, you hear the turkeys calling back and forth. And then as soon as it got a little bit lighter and lighter, all of a sudden they started darting out of the tree and exactly where you told me they were gonna land, they did. It was almost as if they were on cue. This thing is heavy. The best part about it, I think, is spending time with my dad and his utopia, which is the Black Hills of South Dakota. But it was, it was fun. I, I, would, I would try it again. It's a, it's a challenge, I think, is really what I enjoyed most out of it. Sunrise sure is pretty. Welcome to turkey hunting, Laura. <laughs> Laura, you made a good shot. You'll note that I made her carry the turkey out of the woods. Yes, and I also remember how heavy it was. Yes. <laughs> I also remember a trip on the Crow Wing River where you wanted to make a bet with me about fishing. Well, of course, Dad. Every time we're in the fishing boat, we have a little friendly wager going on, don't we? Well, you're the one that brings it up all the time. <laughs> Bill and I were casting for smallmouth and northerns, and my dad was kind of casting for, well, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> the net. Whoa! Woo! There we go. That's a nice fish. Suddenly, I knew my dad didn't stand a chance. Next fish, please. You know, Laura, that was a fun trip, even though I, I guess I lost the, the fishing contest. Well, it's all right. You usually win. <laughs> but you know what I, I like about uh, your career, Laura, is you have expanded your skills to uh, now you're kind of a, you know, a wild game cook, too. Oh, my goodness. Well, I have my mom to thank for teaching me all the cooking skills, but it's also fun to showcase all the field to fork recipes. Indeed. Well, listen, when we come back, as we promised, we have this big, super announcement about the future of Minnesota Bound. Stay with us. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by By the Yard Maintenance-Free Outdoor Furniture, Running Aces Casino and Racetrack, Bent Creek Golf Club Eden Prairie, and by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Hey anglers, it's time for the annual Minnesota Bound Crappie Contest Saturday, May 19th on Lake Minnetonka. Grand prize in a Lumacraft boat trailer and Ebenrude outboard. You must enter to win. Details online at mnbound.com or at participating Mills Fleet Farm stores. Fish on! Hey, thanks for sticking with us. And now it's time for this big announcement. What's in the future for Minnesota Bound? Well, here's your answer. Instead of one host, you're going to have two. Yes, Bill and Laura will be taking over as co-hosts of Minnesota Bound. And you know, guys, uh, I know you're going to handle this show great. It's, it's going to be a, a great success. So uh, I wish you all kinds of luck, OK? Thank you for the opportunity. We promise to make you proud, Dad. Very good, very good. <laughs> now, I'm not riding off into the sunset. Raven and I will be doing some stories occasionally and maybe a Minnesota Bound special a time or two. Uh, but before I say goodbye, I would, last, I would also like to uh, give a special thanks to my assistant for all of these years, Kelly McDonald. 23 years she's been at my side helping produce this show, and also our chief videographer, Aaron Ockenberg. He deserves a lot of credit, as, as the whole Minnesota Bound team does deserve credit. Lastly, I got to thank you, the viewer, because uh, without you, we wouldn't be around. And uh, I ask you just just keep watching because this is a great show and you've made it that way. So with that, it's time to say for the last time, well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Sheridan. This is the star of the show. <laughs> come on, let's go, girl. Come on, come on. Come on. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.
Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Until next time, I'm Ron Sherroff.